Well, hey there, folks. I am back and stopping everything I'm, I'm doing and working on because I just found this. And listen, you knew it had to happen sooner or later. Lots of folks are, are turning their whatever brand MiG-29s into the ghost of, of Kiev. 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 I believe it's in proper Ukrainian. It's pronounced Kiev. But here it is. The first official Ghost of Kiev kit I have seen out there. And how could I resist? First 21st century flying ace. Now, I'm not here to comment on the politics, on whether or not you believe it, or anything like this. I just really had to get this kit to see what it had to offer. Because there are... Oh my gosh, I just noticed the kill marks on it. There are, there are lots of folks posting builds of stand of mig 29s with ukrainian markings and just calling it the ghost but here it is this is the fit this is the official um and of course i'm saying that very facetiously it is just the first kit sold as the ghost of kiev and it is by mr craft which i if you're if you're familiar with the brand you know we're we could be in for a bumpy ride they don't make the finest of of model kits um, i found this one on ebay for the kit was under thirty dollars, but of course shipping, um, I believe, from Poland, and it is made in Poland. It comes with decals for the for it, so um, beautiful box art and all. Okay, now before we go any further, just a couple interesting things about the ghost, about this subject, um, about all of this. Um, so I'm recording this in the wee hours of May first. And it was just roughly four or five hours ago that there were some conflicting reports and then a, a Ukrainian statement, um, some notable publications like the New York Post, the Times of London, and some other um, stuff said that the ghost was real and was shot down and killed after amassing a total of 40 kills of fixed wing and rotary wing aircraft that it was a, a Ukrainian major and a whole thing, a whole story with his name, his picture, interviewing his family. And then slightly, shortly after that, the Ukrainian military came out and said, nope, never mind, there's no ghost. So, um, you know, who knows? There's just this mythology about the ghost. He may exist, he may not. Because, um, you know, there there was another name that was associated with him before, too. And again, I'm, I'm going to keep saying this. But this is not about whether or not you believe in the ghost. The, you know, the... The, whether or not the ghost is real, the bigger value to everybody involved is is the is the morale boost and is the morale that the idea of the ghost can provide. But that's neither here nor there. So this kit is based on Mr. Craft's 2016 release, which is surprisingly to me, after doing just just a quick bit of research, their very own molds. They you know didn't take it from anybody else. Um, I again i'm not i'm not excited to see what they've come up with but so they started with the mig 29 912 the mig 29a they um shortly after added a, a separate top fuselage to make it a 913 and basically you know between um 2000 and what 16 17 and now the only thing that they've added to make it a ghost kit is just the decals but other than that it's the same thing Cool side note, ICM, Ukrainian model company, makes some good kits, some bad, but some also some, some pretty good kits these days. Um, in May, this May, 2022, they are scheduled to release their own Ghost of Kiev kit. And it should be basically just their MiG-29-913 with some markings on it. Um, so I can almost guarantee you without seeing what's in this box or what's in the ICM box that the ICM MiG is probably better kit than this but uh they just by reputation and history they make better model kits than these guys but this is first this is first on the market so i'm calling this the official ghost of kiv kit right. why the mig 29 is armed exclusively with aa 11s i don't know interesting choice artistic choice but let's take a look at of inside the kit Let's see what we're dealing with. So decals are right on top. And uh, interesting. So 
there's two there well there's three ways to to do this this paint scheme there's decals there's painting masks and then there's your own by hand honestly getting the decals and the masks are very hard because most of the places ship them from ukraine and obviously mail going in and out of there is very hard these days so this has the decal options um i'm looking for that kill board under the cockpit and i don't see it in the markings here it would have been cool if it came with that but i think here you just have the legit markings of a ukrainian mig-29 now it should be noted that a lot of the people are using this particular mig with the ukrainian coat of arms that was digitally you know in the digital on the on the spine of the aircraft oh wow this is a rough kit um, that would not be what is being flown in combat. That was a special marking put on for as a showbird once. That is not the standard, like all Ukrainian MiG-29s don't fly with that. Ukrainian MiG-29s have flown in no less than three different, three different camouflage patterns. And um, the digital scheme, it usually just has camouflage that goes throughout that spying section that dorsal section um this was just done for show on one now of course how you know poetic would it be if the ghost was flying one with the big ukrainian symbol on the back of it but it, that that is not a service aircraft that one probably is not flying in combat right now or wasn't or whatever um, but that's the one that everybody seems to model so that's the one that they put in here but the decals look good um, everything is nice and in register. Colors are nice and bright. You can see that the national insignia, um, the roundels are are basically modeled well for the upper side anyway, where it's part of the the camouflage. They're all they're all printed as part of it. You, so you don't really have to position anything in place. Um, even the the smaller tail, we we can tell these are part of the verticals because they have the the small bort numbers on the top of the um, the dielectric panels. So that's, I mean, it looks pretty good. I've never used decals like this for camouflage before, so I'm not sure how this is gonna work, but the decals look pretty good. We'll have to see how they work out later. As for the kit itself, this is what I was afraid of. This is a very rough looking, um, I'm sure they just took whatever MiG-29 kit they had in stock, threw some decals on it and said, bam, we've got the ghost. If you compare this to a, a modern day produced, you know, like good quality, we're talking um, Trumpeter, even a, a newer Zvezda, a Hasegawa MiG-29, this is screaming as like, ah! <laughs> sorry guys, but this is not a good kit. This is quite a large profile. Now, Ukraine flies a very specific version of the MiG-29. They fly the MiG-29 MU-1, which is um, it's based on the MiG-29 9.13 Fulcrum C. So this box says 9.13, okay? But the Ukraine has, has outsourced some help for their MiGs, and uh, most of it is internal, okay? But they are far advanced from, from much of the other MiG-29s flying in the world in terms of internal systems, radar, uh, cockpit displays, uh, systems integrations, communications, things like that. One of the things, though, that does separate them from a lot of the, the Fulcrum A's, the 912s, is that they have these, this larger dorsal spine. And it's hard, if you don't have one to compare it to, this is a work in progress of a North Korean MiG-29 Fulcrum A. Um, this, you can see, this is a Hasegawa, an older Hasegawa kit. But, I mean, if you just look side to side, you can see that the profile, and I'm willing to bet Hasegawa is probably a little bit more accurate here, is quite a bit different. Even though you can see the difference in the smaller, the smaller spine area, um, it's just... There's, there's, it's just quite a bit different in shape here, um, but it is what it is. I'm, I'm building this out of the box to see what we get if we were to purchase and build the ofi the official MiG-29 Ghost of uh, Kiev kit. So we've got 
raised panel lines and the thing is they're raised but they're not even complete across the piece um, they're uneven some are bigger than others um, I wasn't I wasn't expecting much they're not highly accurate either but again I wasn't expecting much when I saw mr. craft hobby kits uh, I'm not I'm not heartbroken and I don't I, I kind of knew what I was getting into when I bought this kit here's another um, mig 29 bulk room C brand I don't know off the top of my head possibly Italeri I don't know but again look at the difference in panel lines and you know much higher quality and the profile that we get between this and this it's quite different so we're not going with a very accurate model kit to start with but it is what it is so we've got fuselage upper and lower this is our gear bay right here. I'm going to stop harping on the the soft details in the I'm not, but I, I am. This is, our, this is our K31 ejector seat, okay? Um, some very interesting landing gear. Like, it's funny how, like, the just the details they chose, like, and wow, big hunking pieces of landing gear to go in, with the in this scale um, and they don't really they're not really accurate to anything but there they are um, now the missiles are not too bad they're not good but they're not too bad they represent what they're supposed to be we've got um, R27s I always try to try to speak both languages for people now so R27s or AA10 Alamos these are A models. Now the thing is that with the electronics upgrade, these are some of the few MiG-29s that can carry the AA-10C or the um, R-27ER, the longer range Alamo. We don't see a lot of model kits that put those missiles in with a MiG-29 because typically they don't carry them, but the Ukrainian ones can if they want. Um, some decent missile pylons though, and then we've got some again, you know enough that you can make out what they are But not at all accurate R-73s AA-11 archers um, A pilot figure that looks just like he is under so much stress It's terrible terrible, <laughs> okay We've got wing top and bottom and Again the panel lines are neither here nor there We've got vertical stabilizer, side to sides, and they have the extensions where the chaff and flare launchers would be, but there doesn't seem to be any. They just kind of end. They just, yeah, there's nothing in there to represent them. We've got some burner cones here. And then we've got sides of the nose, which have this odd kind of shape to them but flattened out we've got the horizontal stabilizers or stabilators and the interiors of the intakes these are I guess supposed to be the FOD shields and then the forward part of the engine exhausts um, so it's gonna be oh and then this is the canopy this is a one-piece canopy with no railing there's, there's nothing there. It just kind of, just kind of sits there. And that's an even worse view than the real MiG-29 does. That's going to be, it's going to be interesting. Um, so let's see. Uh, at least nice full color picture on the front. And another set of decals. Well, that's, that's, uh, is that? A mistake is that standard that's cool if we got another set I don't know if they think we need to or there's a second set in my box for some reason I don't know um, but here we have parts tree we have pretty standard instructions that wow that's the cockpit tub oh my god I didn't even know what that piece was um, so we start in the cockpit that's the cockpit. We start in the cockpit and then start working through various steps. Wow, look at that. Okay. 
Uh, apparently, this one does not even have a control panel or, you know, up front any, anything. Anything at all. Hey, look, there's a canopy rail there. Um, hmm. Yeah. I mean, from what it looks like, and there, there's a beautiful technical drawing of a MiG-29 that I'm sure this is not going to resemble at all. Um, so, the A8, wow! I just gotta point this out. This is a launcher for an R60, and they call this the R60 AA-10 aphid. Like, what the hell? Oh, I'm not even gonna, not even gonna, not even gonna get upset about it. Well, that's nice. Beautiful, full-color marking guide. So at least we got that. And that is a good shape for a MiG-29. I, again, I doubt that's what the fit... But you know what? I might have to, like, eat my hat there. Maybe when it's all done and assembled, it'll look great. Who knows? Who knows? Um, notice there are some small little pieces of decal that go on individually. And then... So again, like I was saying before, the real Ukrainian MiGs would have... Um, camouflage that goes across this part of the dorsal area, not just this blank gray and then the Ukrainian coat of arms. I mean actual combat service um, aircraft, not showbird ones. But um, let's see, what color do we need? This is, oh, looks like A. Okay, A is FS36373. I'm not familiar with what that color is. 36375, I'm very familiar with. Silver gray or silky matte. So that's the base color that we're gonna do basically this whole thing in. And what is nice about the decals is we're not gonna be doing a whole lot of crazy masking top and bottom and different different colors and all that stuff. We just get to spray the whole thing basically. Um, even the anti-glare panel for the notes. I didn't even see a piece for the Oh, no, yeah, the Erstis infrared search and tracking system is just molded in. We're going to have to paint. Okay. But even the anti-glare panel is part of the decal, so we don't even have to paint that. It's interesting. So, um, I'm not sure if this is going to be a quick build, long build. I don't know how the fit is going to be and how much sanding and filling. But if you've ever built a Mr. Hobby, you know, kit, or Mr. Craft kit, sorry, they could take a while with sanding and filling, getting it all, all to work out well. So, this should be interesting. So... I'm going to start the build in the very next video. So join me for that one where we get to work on the official Ghost of, of Kiev MiG-29 by Mr. Craft Hobby Kits. I hope you will join me for this one. I can't wait to see how this goes. It should be just so much fun. Boy, is it going to be interesting. Um, remember, for everybody building stuff out there in YouTube model land, keep building them and build them well. And I'll see you again soon.